The racial composition of the prison population in the United States is very different from the population at large. If people are worried about inequality in America today, I think this deserves more attention in the discussion. Racial inequality in the criminal justice system gets ignored because it doesn't affect most people. In 2010, over 1.6 million people were in state and federal prisons within the United States. So, 497 out of every 100,000 Americans were in jail. About half of 1%. Less than 1%. That doesn't seem very large, but when you separate that population by race, you recognize that the personal effects of the criminal justice system are very unequally shared throughout our society. Whites make up 64% of the total population, but only 31% of the incarcerated population. Blacks represent 14% of society, but 36% of the prison population. Hispanics are 16% of America, but 24% of the American prison population. Less than 1 in 100 Americans are currently in jail, but for some races, genders, and age groups, that ratio is a lot larger. For example, if you're young, black, and male, it's closer to about 1 in 4. That means you'd have a higher probability of going to jail than of getting married or going to college. These results are unequal and problematic as poor black communities lack so many of their members. But what can be done? The causes of this trend are undoubtedly complicated and multi-causal. But there is reason to suggest that part of the blame is our criminal justice system itself. In the ways police officers enforce laws, in the ways that laws are written and prosecuted, and more. In many cases, it is not overt racism by individual actors. Many police officers, prosecutors, and judges are undoubtedly trying to be fair and trying to do the right thing. But economics can explain how unequal enforcement of the criminal law happens anyway. This is because the political and bureaucratic structure of the criminal justice system creates perverse incentives. The formal laws surrounding drug prohibition, for example, are written as if to be colorblind. But people with different levels of wealth face different costs and benefits to participating in the drug trade. Different groups consume different drugs at different rates, and lastly, those groups are politically represented in very different quantities. Thus, they are arrested and incarcerated at very different rates. How could minority groups hope to use the political process to fix inequality when they are systematically over-incarcerated and disenfranchised? Despite noble intentions, Politics often does not affect the basic incentives of costs and benefits faced by political or citizen actors. We might need a new approach to social change if we are going to address these problems. We definitely need more study into the causes of inequality, and we should admit that radical changes might be both necessary and preferable to the status quo.